Leia here from LeiaForSci.com and in this video we'll look at the carbonyl reduction reactions using lithium aluminum hydride. Lithium aluminum hydride is much stronger than the sodium borohydride we discussed in the last video which only reduces aldehydes and ketones. Sometimes referred to as LAH for lithium aluminum hydride, we have the same general structure, a positive spectator ion and an anion which prefers to have only three bonds, in this case ALH3, with a fourth bond to hydrogen adding an extra pair of electrons and a formal charge of minus one. Once again, we're looking at the reactive hydride but in a complex to make it act as a better nucleophile. Lithium aluminum hydride will react with many carbonyl compounds, typically reducing them to alcohols. We use the same trick we did last time, where you break the pi bond and simply add hydrogen to both carbon and oxygen. A ketone gets reduced to a secondary alcohol, and an aldehyde gets reduced to a primary alcohol. Both of these products are achiral, but if we had an asymmetric starting ketone, for example, 2-butanone, the product would be 2-butanol and the alcohol would be on a chiral carbon. It would be racemic because the carbonyl starts out sp2 and flat. Primary alcohols have two hydrogens on the carbon with the oxygen, making that product achiral. Lithium aluminum hydride will also react with carboxylic acids and carboxyl derivatives. We can use a similar trick here to find the answer, but keep in mind we have to get rid of that extra electronegative group, the oxygen or the nitrogen. For an ester, you do the same thing. You break the pi bond, you add the hydrogen, but you also have to cut off that leaving group. This gives you a primary alcohol with two hydrogens added from lithium aluminum hydride. And we also get a secondary product, which is the R group protonated to give us an alcohol. And this is because the second step in this reaction uses a protic solution like H3O+, which your professors may or may not ask you to show. Carboxylic acid will lose the hydroxy group completely, and the rest will be reduced just like we've seen before, once again giving you a primary alcohol. Where the hydrogen on the oxygen also comes from the protonation step. The amide reaction is slightly different. In the presence of lithium aluminum hydride, we cut off both bonds to oxygen, losing that atom completely, giving us a primary amine instead of an alcohol as we've seen in the previous reactions. The mechanism for reducing aldehydes and ketones are the same as sodium borohydride discussed in the last video and linked below. The ester reduction mechanism is different, so let's take a look. The reaction begins when the negative aluminum hydride uses a lone pair of electrons between aluminum and hydrogen to attack the partially positive carbonyl carbon. This puts too many bonds on the carbon atom and causes it to collapse the pi bond up onto the electronegative oxygen atom. The hydride breaks off so we have ALH3 free in solution. Oxygen has its two initial purple pairs of electrons and the third lone pair which came from the former pi bond. Carbon now has a bond between itself and hydrogen atom where the hydride used to be attached to aluminum. The difference in this reaction compared to aldehydes and ketones is that oxygen being negative in this molecule has the ability to do something about it. We have a leaving group here which is OCH3, that means it can get kicked out. If oxygen takes its lone pair of electrons and collapses back down to carbon to reform that carbonyl, Carbon would have too many bonds, so the leaving group, the OCH3, gets kicked out and broken off. The electrons that came down are now sitting as a pi bond between oxygen and carbon, and we have a hydrogen at the end of the molecule giving us an aldehyde. We also have an OCH3- floating around in solution. But don't forget, lithium aluminum hydride is a very strong reducing agent and if there's an aldehyde in solution with more ALH4 because you never add just one molecule you're adding millions another ALH4 with a negative charge will reach out and attack the aldehyde as a brand new reaction but this time the negative oxygen can't bring its electrons back down because there's no leaving group and nothing to kick out 
so it has to wait for the final step where we slowly introduce acid into the solution, which we'll show here as H3O+. Oxygen will reach out and grab one of the partially positive hydrogen atoms, giving those electrons back to oxygen and forming a primary alcohol as our final product. Some professors like to see if you understand this, so they'll add D3O plus instead of H3O plus in the final product. Recognize that the hydrogen atoms on carbon came from lithium aluminum hydride, and the hydrogen atom on oxygen came from the final protonating solvent. If we used deuterium as the acid, it would be OD instead of OH. When we add this acid into solution, CH3O- will also reach for a proton and get protonated, giving us potentially two different primary alcohol products. The first alcohol comes from the initial ester chain. The second alcohol comes from the OR as the substituent on the ester. The mechanism for carboxylic acid reduction is the most unique with lithium aluminum hydride. Aluminum hydride reacts because it has the electrons between hydrogen and aluminum making the hydride want to attack. In the other carbonyls, it was the carbonyl carbon that was partially positive and attracted that hydride, which is why we had a direct nucleophilic attack. But don't forget, a carboxylic acid is an acid. That means it has an acidic proton that is much more reactive than a carbonyl carbon. So instead of attacking the carbon, Hydride will attack the acidic hydrogen, breaking it off from the oxygen and giving us a carboxylate, collapsing those electrons back onto oxygen. The two hydrogen atoms form a molecule of H2 gas and will bubble out of solution, leaving us with a negative carboxylate and AlH3 in solution. But remember, aluminum hydride is the more reactive molecule, and in this case, even though it's neutral, Aluminum's electrons get greedy, and now they attack the partially positive carbonyl carbon, kicking up the pi electrons to sit as a lone pair on oxygen. This gives us a carbon with two single-bound oxygen atoms. The first one has three lone pairs and a negative charge. The second one has its initial two lone pairs, and then attached, we have AlH2. Aluminum is an exception to the octet rule and wants to have only three bonds. It's unhappy as a hydride with four bonds and a negative charge, but it does not want to have only two bonds. So to compensate, it binds to the oxygen, giving it three bonds, two to hydrogen and one to oxygen. In doing so, we make this entire group a good leaving group so that we can kick it out in the next step. How do we kick it out? Oxygen with a negative charge will take an electron pair and move it towards the carbon to reform that pi bond. In doing so, this entire group gets kicked out because the bond between carbon and the upper oxygen breaks away. I'll redraw the product exactly as we see it, even though it's a little bit sideways. But look at that. Did we not just form another aldehyde intermediate? We did. And what happens if you have an aldehyde in the presence of ALH4 minus? If you said it's going to attack again, you're absolutely correct. Once again, we see the same exact reaction. Hydride will attack the carbonyl carbon. Those electrons get kicked up onto the oxygen atom. And once again, we have a negative oxygen, but this time with two hydrogen atoms bound to that former carbonyl carbon, one from each step in the reduction. Oxygen can't collapse back down because there's nothing to kick out, so it'll wait patiently in solution while we slowly pour in some acid. The O- will reach for that partially positive hydrogen atom, collapsing the electrons back onto oxygen to form water, giving us a final product, as expected, a primary alcohol. Be sure to join me in the next video where we look at the similarities and differences of reduction using sodium borohydride versus lithium aluminum hydride. You can find this entire video series along with my Redox practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website, layerforsci.com slash Redox.